calculate the flip of the water bottle, you need the height, the speed, and the amount of force. So we did a lot of tests, a lot of flips, and we found that the optimal level to ensure a landing was between two feet and two feet six inches. So what we did, we took an we took an average of that at two feet three inches and said that's the optimal height to uh, be able to land it. This, and this was over many, many tests. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that if we flip it way too high, it'll hit the ground too hard, bounce off, or just overflip. And if you get it too low, it's hard to ensure that it gets enough rotation to land. When determining the speed of the throw, we were solving the find initial velocity. So we found the average height, which was 0.69 meters, the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we found the time to be 0.4 seconds by uh, slowing the video down and counting the frames from the time it took to, to leave the hand to get to its max height. And we converted that to seconds, and it was about 0.4 seconds on average. So we used the equation delta y equals vit plus one half at squared to find to solve for vi and when you plug everything in isolate for vi you get your uh, initial velocity at 3.69 meters per second Okay, so next we're going to determine the force of the throw. So we're using the equation F equals MA. And we determined the mass of just getting our water bottle and scaling it, and we got it to be 0.147 kilograms. But since there are two unknown variables in this equation, we had to find acceleration before we could complete, complete this. So we found acceleration by doing the, uh, the, the final velocity minus the initial velocity over time or like basically the, the change of the velocity over time, change of speed over time. And uh, we got the acceleration to be 9.21 meters per second squared. Okay, and so when we come back over here and plug that into the uh, equation, we ended up with the final answer of 1.35 kilogram meters per second squared. Next, we're calculating torque, which allows the bottle to have angular acceleration. So we're using the formula torque equals moment of inertia times alpha, and moment of inertia for the bottle would be mR squared times alpha. Okay, so we plugged in our numbers for mass and radius, but we didn't know what alpha was, so we had to do another formula to find alpha, and that formula is alpha equals omega final minus omega initial over time, but we did not know omega, so we made a formula to find omega, and omega is the um, amount of spins in degrees over time. So we went frame by frame in our videos of the bottle flips and found that it went just over 270 degrees. So we had at, at 273 degrees and converted that to radians. So we had 4.772 radians over 0.4 seconds to find omega, which came out to be 11.93 radians per second. So we took this number and moved it back over into this equation and got that the alpha would be 29.83 radians per second squared. So you bring that back into this formula, plug it in for alpha, you have the mass 1.47 kilograms times the radius of the bottle, which is 0.16 squared times alpha, which gets 0.1123 newton meters. The formula we used was used as if there was no free moving water in the water bottle, but this would add an enormous amount of different variables into it because as the water bottle is flipped, the water is able to move freely throughout the bottle. So at the beginning, there's a low moment of inertia because it's all in the bottom clumped together. But as it goes through the spin, it disperses and increases the moment of inertia, thus decreasing angular speed. We weren't able to take this into account because the calculations would be never ending because the moment of inertia is constantly changing throughout the bottle flip. However, this very concept is what allows the bottle flip to work. See, as the bottle is flipping and going through its cycle, the, the angular 
uh, speed is is increase or decreasing, which slows it down enough where it can land upright. One. There are many different aspects that can affect whether or not a bottle flip is successful. These include the height of the throw, the speed of the throw, the torque, and lastly, and most importantly, the center of gravity of the bottle. Center of gravity. Filling the water bottle to exactly one third full lowers the bottle's center of gravity to the ideal location. Having too much water makes the water bottle top heavy, which makes it more difficult to land without tipping over. Having too little water decreases the mass of the bottle to so low that it will bounce on impact instead of sticking. Torque. As the water bottle completes its rotation, many different torques are acting upon it. When the bottle is still in the thrower's hand, the torque from the hand and the torque from the mass of the water in the bottom of the bottle act in opposite directions. It is best to release the water bottle when it is exactly parallel from the ground. Once the bottle is released, the angular speed, moment of inertia, and torque are constantly changing due to the free motion of the water. The slow motion videos show that the water slowly disperses around the perimeter of the bottle leaving gaps of air in the center. This dispersion slows the angular velocity until the bottle is able to come to a slow enough speed to land upright. Center speed of throw. The speed of the throw also plays a major role in the success of the bottle flip. Early in the presentation, you saw how we calculated the optimum speed of a bottle flip. This speed of 3.69 meters per second will combine with the other factors to help make a successful bottle flip. Force of throw. The force of the throw is incredibly important. With too much force, the bottle will fail to land upright and will continue to rotate onto its side. With too little force, the bottle cannot make a full rotation. It is important to use just the right force, which we calculated to be 0.1123 newton meters. You would never expect that there is so much physics involved in a simple bottle flip. However, it is actually a very complicated process that involves various concepts which we have covered this year. Any questions?